What is blind bidding? Well, blind bidding is the term used to describe the sealed bid multiple offer process most commonly used in Canada when two or more buyers wish to buy the same property at the same time. Buyers are blind in the sense that they do not get to know the price or terms of the other offers they are competing against, and the seller is free to negotiate with a single buyer or with all of them until they get the best deal for themselves and finally agree to sell their property. This system system has been used by sellers and their realtors in Canada for decades, but has recently come under the microscope by our federal government, whom is seeking to end the process in an attempt to slow the ever increasing prices of real estate in Canada. So the question is being asked, is blind bidding a bad thing? Does it need to go? Well, let's dive a little deeper and look at the pros and cons on this issue. All right, well, there are two key advantages to blind bidding, and they are unsurprisingly centered around the seller. The most obvious advantage to the blind bidding process is that it puts the sellers completely in control of the information and interest on their property when they are fielding offers. Blind bidding pits buyers against each other, with sellers counting on buyer FOMO or fear of missing out to result in one buyer going over the top and making a very compelling offer to buy the seller's property. The second advantage is that blind bidding allows sellers to control the pace and timeline of the offer process. This is really important because real estate is not a commodity. Each piece of real estate is completely unique just like the people that own them. And the sellers need time and space to contemplate terms like possession dates that they're going to need to move out of their current home and into their new one. Or perhaps the buyers may have special conditions that need to be reviewed by the sellers and their seller's agent and so forth. So by keeping buyers blind to one another, it gives the sellers time and space and by putting the buyers on standby to allow the seller to work through the finer details that they need to finally decide they're comfortable to put their property under contract. So you might be asking yourself, why do we use a process that so overwhelmingly favors the seller in a transaction? Well, the point here is that it's the seller's property. The only reason that there's a house for sale is because the sellers have decided to put their property on the market. It's the sellers that pay real estate sales commissions, and it's the real estate agents who in turn use these commissions to pay the government or the regulatory body in their province or their local real estate association in addition to cooperating commissions which would include the fee to the buyer's realtor as well. So the seller is paying the bills within this industry and the industry is geared to help them maximize the sale of what will likely be amongst the largest transactions in their lives. But it's not without its drawbacks. So how about some of the cons to the blind bidding process? Well, the first and most obvious downside to blind bidding is that buyers hate it. With no knowledge of the other offers they're up against, buyers are forced to take a shot in the dark at a competitive offer price. This is even more challenging when sellers price their properties artificially low in a signal to buyers that they're expecting a bidding war and for someone to go over asking price, leaving the buyers to decide just how much over asking to offer. And it's worth pausing for a moment to provide some clarity as to why sellers and their realtors list lower than market value. Many think it's because the sellers and their agents want to create a sense of anticipation and launch a bidding war, but it's also quite often because neither the seller or the realtor have any idea what the house is actually worth in a market that's moving as fast as it is in Canada right now. It's very hard to price real estate in a hot market, so sellers take the easy way out and list low to attract as many buyers and offers as possible to try and create a competitive process and get a good offer in front of them. which brings us to the last downside of the blind bidding process and that this process pushes buyers to go over the top so to speak and when that one crazy buyer's offer is revealed and the property is marketed sold it now sets the bar for all future sales as comparable sellers will have the expectation that their property is worth what that crazy buyer paid this is how prices can go up so fast once a couple of buyers open up the bank vault, it now raises the bar for everybody, which puts all kinds of challenges on buyers financing and raises questions regarding appraisals and whether or not other buyers will be willing to step up to this new pricing level. So. Do we need to do away with blind bidding? Do we need a new set of rules and regulations because the market is so hot? 
Well, before we open up the hood and start tinkering, it's important to remember that this process has evolved over decades and has been used in every market conditions Canadians have ever really experienced. It may seem unfair in today's market condition, but making a change to the rules now could introduce unintended consequences for future markets. A better solution would be to find an alternative means of adding housing supply, reducing red tape for developers, or perhaps giving first-time buyers or buyers at lower price points better terms on their mortgages to help them compete with equity-rich buyers. It's a complex issue. I'd love to know what you think about it in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching, guys, and we'll see you next video.